Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about anemic domain models. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on one of my videos about domain driven design and it goes Hi Frederick, I hear the term anemic domain model thrown about and I'm left a little bit confused. According to Martin Fowler's blog post about anemic domain models it seems that uh, you are advised that a model are to be kept um, that domain models are to be kept dumb and all business logic is wrapped up in services well will we end up with the dreaded anemic domain model in that case am i misunderstanding something and what's your experience on that thanks well so the I wrote back to the subscriber and I took a segment from the article in question and I posted a segment that I think is very important and it might be that this is a bit confusing but I'm just going to read you a, a, a scripture or like a, a, a quote from this. So one source of confusion in all this is that many uh, object oriented experts do recommend putting a layer of procedural services on top of the domain model to form a service layer but this isn't an argument to make the domain model void of behavior indeed service layer level uh, layer advocates use a service layer in conjunction with behavioral rich domain models now the way that i interpret that is going I, I'm gonna try to explain what that means and I wrote back to the subscriber and I tried to give an example of what this at least from my perspective actually means so the idea that you have a service layer is in order for you to capture that which is not possible to know through the domain model or things that should be separate from the model itself when I say that you should have a dumb quote unquote quote, domain model, what I'm actually stating to you is that you should not create a domain model that has a lot of intricate knowledge about how the system works. That doesn't mean that it is completely empty necessarily. In some cases it could be, but there are extremes on both sides of this and I'll explain. So in the case of an extreme of a domain model would be, in my opinion, a very big mistake would have been to say that, well, my domain model knows how to persist things to the system. In other words, it knows about the database, it knows how to uh, do queries and things of this nature. That's actually an example from the article in question that this is something that is very logically uh, a good idea to actually move outside of the domain model itself because um, I'm not going to dive into that because there's, there's a lot of factors in th uh, that goes into that. So that might be the extreme on saying that the domain should contain business logic or the domain model should contain business logic. Now the other side of this extreme is let's say that you wanted to have a service for practically everything because if you think about it well if you have a domain model why would that ne be necessary if you already have a service that might be able to compute something. So the example I gave was imagine that you have a phone number or let's say that you have a string. You have a string and it comes into your system and the string you know is going to contain a phone number. Now what's the first thing you might do if you want to figure out if something is a phone number? Well you're gonna to have to write some validation logic, right? Because we need to have some logic to figure out if this is a valid phone number and if it's not we're gonna throw an error and just say hey user you gave me something that's not a phone number that's not okay. Now if you were to have the idea, as I stated, that all right, a service should contain all the business logic exclusively, and you're going with the extreme definition here, well, then you would say, well, then I really only need to create a service, right, that knows how to validate this phone number or this string to validate that. Okay, so what you do is you create that service that takes in a string and just says true or false. Is this a phone number? Done. Now the problem with that is that now your magical function that f solves this problem needs to be included in theory 
in every point in the code where you actually don't, you're not 100% sure whether or not this is a phone number or not, because you maintain the information, like you're actually not capturing the fact that this is a phone number, you're just sending around a string. And from the consumer perspective, from other parts of the code, that code doesn't know that this is a string or sorry, that this is a phone number. It has to do the computation itself. And now maybe the validation isn't the problem anymore. Maybe you want to figure out what's the first few digits from this phone number. What type of area code are we talking about? And now you need more methods or, uh, to the service. And you need to figure out in all of these other places where, OK, so I, I follow, I logically follow now. OK, the string came in there. And then it goes through all of these functions. And along the way, I validate that it's a phone number. And then I have the string that I probably just use a variable name to say that, oh, yeah, this is a phone number uh, with the variable name. But the type is still a string, which is a problem because now I have another function that is needed to figure out the area code or whatever, right? This is an anti-pattern for sure, because what's happening is that you are spreading the knowledge of what a phone number is and how to perform different operations throughout the entire code base. And you and in in from my perspective that is not the way to go. And I hope that this is a definition that would be agreeable to because apparently Eric Evans was actually part of writing out this uh, or was actually part of this discussion as far as I understood. So if Martin Fowler and Eric Evans can just uh, you know if you do me a solid one watch this video and see if I got it right because if I don't it didn't get it right then correct me. But the sweet spot here, from my perspective, would have been to say, all right, I will create a class. And I'm going to call that class a phone number. And the, f the way that I instantiate the phone number class, or the domain entity, is to give it a string. And at instantiation, it's going to run this validation. Now, what's beautiful about that is that the, the fact that I am checking if the string is a phone number happens the second I create the instance of the, t the of the phone number class and all I have to do is to at the very top of my program when the, the string comes into the system either from a database usually or from a network to just wrap that string immediately into that object and now the rest of my code just doesn't need to uh, doesn't have to figure out if this is a phone number or not from a string there's no other computation that needs to take place because I have captured the knowledge of how to check if a string is a phone number in a type that represents a phone number. And now my the rest of the code actually becomes much cleaner. And so as an example, if I now need to know what the error code is, I can actually capture the logic of how to figure out if the this what area code this is from inside the class. I don't have to have a service to do that because the domain entity itself can actually encapsulate all of that in a very clean and nice way. Now my general rule of thumb, and it actually goes f further and they are st uh, the there's another quote from the article stating that the service layer should be thin. And I completely agree with that because when you're dealing with a service layer, what you're looking for is usually uh, when you're dealing with most of the time, like honest to God, it's most of the time that this is the case. When you're dealing with persisting things to a network or persisting things to a database or doing network calls or doing anything that isn't really going to be, I'm not saying a pure function necessarily, but something that the domain entity in of itself, can, it cannot figure it out without having external help from a network or something like that. I will go as far as to argue that I think that it's an anti-pattern anti to have a domain entity that knows how to connect to networks and knows how to uh, and, and knows how to persist things to a database and so forth. Ideally, these are the things that you want to separa sep uh, separate out. It's the same thing with having a domain entity that knows how to produce a view or something like that, like spit out HTML. You ideally want the domain logic to be captured in the domain entity, if, if at all possible. And that's why I argue that there is a sweet spot between having a service and having a domain entity. I hope that makes sense. So. What I want you to take away from this is that this idea of an anemic domain model is absolutely an anti-pattern because if you get to the point where you're going so extremely into this idea that your domain entities should just basically be a 
DAO or like a wrapper for some data. If that's the only, like if if you go to the absolute extreme with that, you're going to be forced to write a lot of validation code in a do lots of different services just to figure out things that could very nicely and inher in inherently fit within the entity. Things that now like the rest of the code needs to know because you're basically just passing around a raw value such as a string or something like that instead of wrapping that string into a better in, into a class that actually now has taken care of all of that uh, validation logic for you or whatever you're doing like all that logic is now captured in that class which is a very very nice pattern and I think that you should follow that if at all possible but what you don't want on the other side of the extreme is to say have a domain entity that knows how to connect to the database, knows how to uh, check the session cookies, and knows how to uh, like do these other things like pro connect to the network and things of that nature. That is also, I will argue, an anti-pattern. So it's about figuring out, and I'm just going to use the term pure logic. If you can f capture pure domain logic that doesn't depend on external factors such as networks and databases and so forth in the domain entity that's a very good spot to have it in like converting from one object to another or like in, uh, like shaking if two things are equal etc etc or validating a data type these are very very good use cases to put like that logic it fits very nicely into the domain entity service level stuff is usually things such as persisting things to a database calling to a network or some other service or something like that that's the sort of thing that ideally should be in a service that's a general rule of thumb it's not perfect but it's a good one have a great day